Hello and welcome, family, to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Seraki. How you doing? Hey, what's up? How's everything going? Uh, I really do pray that you are well in all your ways, family, and that you're moving into living life uh, truly on your own terms. Uh, thanks to every single person that supports us on Patreon. We appreciate love you so much and everyone who sends us a love donation through PayPal. And a special shout out to Mama Nature the wind, uh, the ancestors that travel in the wind and just, you know, the sunshine, ra, all, all, all just nature's vibes. Um, they're just so beautiful. Yo, if you don't have anybody else, never forget you have nature. But those are stories uh, for other days, a family. Uh, I actually saw one or you two YouTubers cover this, but it was, I really wanted to talk about this. And it's about how time is speeding up. I actually don't see it as time speeding up as much as time is actually breaking down. And uh, even Wyon had this story where they talked about how the earth is spinning faster than before. And it wasn't just an anomaly that happened once or twice, but it's happening more frequently. And what happened was, I think back in July or something, um, usually, okay, so the time we're on is this Gregorian time. And, you know, this abnormal time we were put on was part of the, the invasion, was part of the takeover of our narrative. We as a natural people used to follow the moons and we used to have 13 moons in our, you know, in our year. And we used to follow the, the new to the full moon, which is a perfect 28 day cycle, which would give us a perfect 13 month year. But when Babylon came in, they actually totally broke that down and they put us on this new Gregorian time, uh, which followed this. So we follow the spinning of the earth and everything that we use, the universal time, UTC and all that and GMT and all that, um, all rely. No, I think it's UTC basically all rely on the spinning of the earth. And so this is basically what they have built their entire matrix on. And it's happening so frequently. It's only a leap second. That's what they call it, a leap second, where the Earth spun around the... Instead of taking 24 hours to do a total rotation, the Earth did it in 23 hours and a bit. But now those bits are becoming more bits to the point where they feel like they'll need to um, actually calculate them or include them because it could affect everything, including like the Internet, because the Internet is based on the UTC algorithm. All our clocks and times are based on it. And so with the shifting of the earth, if they, you know, so there's been a lot of debate among the scientists because these systems, that's why I'm saying these systems, they don't want to change them. So there's been so much, you know, debate um, on whether they should actually include leap seconds now, just like we have a leap year. And what's happening, family, is basically their time system is breaking down and they took us all onto their matrix of time and this has been the main pillar of their system like how crazy is it that here in africa we celebrate our new years in december which is like the middle of our summer this is our winter right now spring is coming spring is coming in you know in September, that's when the Ethiopians celebrate their new year. I always say Kenya is part of southern Ethiopia. But that's when we used to celebrate our new year from around the September 11th to around September 23rd. I'm hoping we'll put something together. And at least the unity communities around the world that are ready to get up and going can maybe try and meet or something in that time. But family, they got us so good mentally that we celebrate New Year in the middle of summer. Ah, <laughs> uh, you gotta laugh. I mean, if you don't laugh, what will you do, cry? Um, so, you know, so they're saying on July 29th, Earth's full spin was 1.5 millisecond, milliseconds shorter than 24 hours, which means Earth experienced its shortest day ever. And it wasn't just a one-time fluke. Um, and they say, you know, and this article tries to make light of it. It's actually written by the business insider. And they try and make it like a joke, like, oh, my God, Earth is working so hard. Like, you know, they were able to, you know, Earth was able to cut off like 1.5 milliseconds. But basically what's happening, family, 
is that time is breaking down. This is another sign of Babylon's total collapse, of the fall of Babylon. Their time is literally, you know, falling apart. Okay, Wind, I see you. And the thing is, family, if you look at it, like what I, a lot of you have contacted me about the moon, you know, we've been sharing the moon cycles and everything. A lot of you have contacted me about how, you know, there's so much evidence that they replaced our moon. And that's probably it. But they're using this moon because a lot of people say it's a mothership. I mean, there's so many stories about the moon. Is it the real moon? Did they replace our moon? And I wouldn't be surprised if part of the replacing of the moon is what created this new timeline that we're on. And this is not something they're excited about, time speeding up, because it's just like they're trying to stop it, which makes me now think of every all the experiments that they're doing right now, with all the you know colliders that have been turned on in North Dakota, in Geneva, allegedly. Maybe they know something is seriously wrong and they're trying to save their matrix. The matrix that has artificially taken over our world. And so family, if you don't move beyond time, you will become a victim of time, which means you'll always be running out of time. Because many people are now reporting how the days are shorter and things happen more fast and before, you know, it's morning and then before you know it, you know, the day is gone. And that's why it's more, it's, you have to move beyond time to your plans, to your narrative, to your carrying out your narrative. And you just take advantage of certain like peaks in energy. Like this new moon and the full moon, that's even if it's a false moon, that's a moon that's ruling the world right now. And you can take advantage of those energies just like they take advantage of our sun and sun people. But if you'd, you should get onto a more natural rhythm. Like I can't tell you the last time I wore a watch family. It's been years. And just how I'm orienting my day, even with sleep family, like, because I told you guys now I have to, you know, I, you know, the energies have been so intense. So I've started taking a siesta. And it's funny because the minute I talked about it, I stopped taking siestas. But anyway, you know, spirit is so funny like that. But um, there are days where I feel like taking a siesta. Sometimes it's in the afternoon and then sometimes it will be early evening, like 6 to 7 p.m. And I found that I wake up around 2 to 3 a.m. And it's no longer because it's the witching hour. But it's like that's when my creativity wants to express itself. And I find that's when my spiritual team really wants to talk it out, really wants to give me downloads for the show, for my life, um, for, you know, on just what's going on. And that's when I'm also engaged spiritually um, to do certain work. And I find like it's become such a mystical thing where I'll be risen from sleep. And then it's almost like... I don't know how to put this, but it's like I'm given an assignment. I know some of you will relate for you. If you know, you know. Let me put it like that. And I'll like be given an assignment or something. That's how it feels. And then I'll go back to sleep and I'll lucidly dream. And to lucid dream just means like you're awake in your dream as you're having it. It's like a, what they call a daydream kind of thing. And you'll lucidly dream about the, the execution of the mission they've given you. That's what happens sometimes. Other times, that's the best time for me to write. Um, it's become a really good time for me to put, you know, to put visions together. It's funny because the other day, um, I usually don't turn on any electronics at this time or anything, but I really do also follow the lead of spirit. So the other day, spirit got me to wake up and kind of go through the comments um, on one of the shows that I'd done. And I saw like some of the family was talking about, hey, um, okay, God. you should, you know, you should write a children's book. And then they even came up with the name of the children's book and all this stuff. And the thing is, I have actually been thinking of how do we impact the narrative of our children or something like that? 
And so it's like I I woke up and I was going through the comments. So the first that was one of like the the first ten comments I read. And then she actually tagged the other people who had said they were writers or graphic designers and all this stuff. And so I I read all that and I was like, whoa, that's such a good idea. Blah 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 blah. I was also thinking of it, but I hadn't thought about it in this way. And because um, he was saying about doing adventures, you know, of Little Mumbi or something. I think there's even a, a sh- there must be a show or a book about that. The big adventures, adventures of Little Mumbi. Anyway, whatever. But it was something that I be- the spirit had been talking to because family at heart, I'm like a poet and a writer. That's my that's like a, the, my my innermost, you know, the thing that would give me the most is is this artist vibe. If I could just wake up and paint and write my little poems and write stories like that, I'd love that. And um, and so anyway, the reason I share this is because I was led to that. And then I kind of just sat in that space. And so I feel like a lot of secrets. Whoa. Thanks for those who have really just given me a different attitude towards the wind, <laughs> um, you know, as as part, you know, as spirit, as part of the show. But the reason I'm even sharing that is I feel that um, you need to get into your own rhythm, family, and your own rhythm of when you meditate, when you have that time to yourself, where it's just you and your spiritual team, and you can get downloads, insights, all this stuff. Um, you know, and, and create when you're resting, when you're visualizing, when you're astral traveling or working on your spiritual gifts, etc., etc. You need to create your own schedule. And this is the best time to do it because a Babylon time that everyone is on is breaking down. And so you need to really, that's why I keep talking about getting into your own narrative family. You need to shift onto your own timeline because that's how they got us off the timeline. And now, as we wait for the new timeline, because this brick timeline has to break it down before a new timeline comes, as we wait for that new timeline to emerge, we should have our projects and our goals determine our timeline and operate more with just the nat- nature's time, sunrise, sunset, and our natural time. So I'm finding like I have different work times now. So I work great in, in, our, in, in cycles. Sometimes it's two-hour cycles. Sometimes it's four-hour cycles. And I have this thing where I love to, like, commune with spirit from 2 to 4 a.m. or 2 to 5 a.m. I never place a time limit. But then I won't feel guilty when I go back to sleep from 5 to, like, 9 a.m. or whatever. I'm just giving you an example of how now I'm no longer... I've broken out of that Babylon schedule, wake up at eight, have breakfast, do blah, 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 work out. Some people wake up at six, they work out and they have, get out of that family. Get out of planning your life according to Babylon's time. Because I keep saying we're on spiritual time now. Some days you'll move faster than others. There's days, family, where I do work for like a week or two weeks or three weeks. Or where I do work for like 10 people. I know some of you know what I'm talking about. And then there are days where it's not that the spirit is not with me or it's not the time for that. And it will feel like I'm pushing, I'm forcing issues. I'm pushing water uphill, basically. And so you have to now get onto your own timeline. Because if you are on the Babylon timeline, then you'll be constantly running out of time which is ironic that they want us to be running out of time in the most important time of our lives when we're writing the new book of time. So what an exciting time. I know it's all ironic, right? What an exciting season we're in, family, that we can move into our own rhythm, our own schedule, And start to move even naturally by the moon instead of, you know, whether it's the fake moon or the real moon, that's, it's still on that 28-day cycle. And they're using that power now, so we might as well. Define your time differently, family. That's how you stay above the matrix. And you'll get so much done. 
we should actually be celebrating this because it's another sign of the fall of Babylon, of the fall of the matrix. The fact that for them, time is speeding up. They're literally running out of time. And as I was saying, sorry, as I conclude, maybe that's why they've turned on all these hard on colliders. Maybe it's something that they're trying to fix something, fix time. Because it's all about time travel. And, and many other things, when you look at the mystical undertones of the hard on collider in Geneva and things like that. So maybe that's what they're trying to play with, but you're above that. So, so move your life out of the timeline of Babylon family as much as you can. Find your own rhythm. Until next time, to Copa Moja. for a conscious community or for people you know who are on their awakening journey uh, on their trans transition to an off-grid living in your country well we have the solution family we're calling it unity communities we get so many emails every week from people who ask if I know of people in their region or people in their city or people in their town who are on a similar kind of journey who have broken away or are breaking away from the religious psychosis and they're looking for just people who think the same way in their town in their city but more importantly to give us a community where we feel understood, understood, overstood, where we can bond with people of like mind. And if you feel called to be part of this, definitely email me at drmumbi at drmumbishow.com. Uh, please put your country in the subject line with Unity Communities. Get in touch with me, uh, drmumbi at drmumbishow.com. Unity Communities.